Hey, what's up everyone? It's Gerald and today we have something really special. As you can tell from the title of the video, we'll be checking out Intel's latest 12th generation CPUs. Thanks to the folks at Intel, Aftershock, Asus and Corsair, we have a custom rig all built. We'll be putting this beast through a few benchmark tests and games as well. It screams RGB and is totally made for gaming. At the heart of it all is Intel's 12th generation i7-12700 CPU. And to pair along with this is ROG's brand new Z690 motherboard. It's plenty of Thunderbolt ports, USB ports, Wi-Fi 6E, and glorious RGB as well. And on top of that, we have the latest DDR5 RAM. Pretty much there's no bottlenecks in this, and it's all gonna be smooth sailing from here. But whether or not it really lines up to the test, Let's check out the benchmark scores and we're going to do some gaming on it as well. Because as we know these days, when it comes to benchmark scores, I think the processor and the motherboard, they know how to play the game. But what actually reflects in real world performance is where it really matters. So let's get into it guys. We're going to get hardware info in once again to see if all the processors here are running cool, what the temperature is looking like and we've been idle for quite some time here. If you can look at the numbers here, it's okay, actually looking pretty cool across the board. We are talking about average times about 25 to as high as 74. This is actually pretty normal in some ways and in the previous generation we can see temperatures going as high as 90 on average. So, so far so good when it comes to idle but clearly that's not the real test. Okay, for a start, let's get into the first important thing here, and that would be 3D Mark. Time to run the time and tested Time Spy. I think everyone's very familiar with this. Let's go with it and see how it performs in terms of the numbers wise. Okay, Time Spy has run the processor through its paces, and let's look at the numbers. We're looking about 13,799 13, score here. Take those numbers and tell us how does this actually figure out against what you're expecting from the new processors. Look at all this, there's no, we're not, we're not faking the numbers here, it is running on the new 12th gen Intel Core i7 12700KF and we have the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070. Looking through all these numbers here, FPS wise, graphically, it's looking pretty much what we really expected. I think we can really push this even more when it comes to gaming. CPU score, we're looking at about 16,721 and a CPU test of 56 FPS. Make it of what you will of these numbers, guys. With 3D Mark out of the way, this is the big number that we'll be looking out for when it comes to the benchmark scores. So keep this number in mind when you're comparing it to other processors in the market. And let's go on to Cinebench. Before we actually go into Cinebench, we're looking at the temperatures here once again. Guys, the temperatures don't even seem to be budging at all. It's insane. It's really running really cool. The, the highest that we can look at right now, 62 degrees Celsius. That's actually pretty low, guys, compared to what we can tell in the previous generation. We're talking about hitting temperatures about 90 when it comes to such performances. Okay, now we're in Cinebench once again, and we have quite a few benchmarks here with all the other processors in the market. That being said, let's go for multi-core and let's go start. Man, the rendering is looking pretty fast. We can hear the fan speeding up quite a bit. Can you hear this, Zeno? Yeah, I can, you are speaking my silent earlier, right? Yeah, but right now, silent, but now it's, it's really ramping up now. I think Cinebench is really pushing this uh, GPU, CPU to its limits. But it's still okay. It's a very gentle hum. Not too... It's, it's not, not like... Violent. Yeah, not like a plane taking off. It's rendering here and pass one. Boom. That looks pretty good. How's it looking at right now? You can see that it's hitting a scores about 21,000, very close to 22K. Do we have, we can't really connect this to the internet because we don't have the benchmark scores at this point in time. We can't leak anything. This is under embargo at the time of recording here. So take these numbers and let us know. 
What do you think of these numbers here? Last one you're gonna put it through would be superposition benchmark. And we're gonna see how that really does well when it comes to another benchmark test. Preset wise, I think we can do even more. 4K optimize. Let's see how superposition benchmark really pushes this processor to its limits. We're looking at 4K optimize and let's Give it a go. Okay guys, we've just finished the superposition benchmark and we're looking at a 4K optimized test. We're, look, we're pushing very close to 11K here. We can't compare our results online because these numbers are still under embargo. So take note of these numbers guys. We'll be playing quite a few titles here starting off with Doom. We're going to Chivalry, Forza, Genshin Impact and of course Valorant as well. It's a good cross section of the titles that you'll be checking out and be playing on this rig. After all, it's a very modest rig, especially 3070, very attainable for most folks, together and paired with the brand new Intel 12th generation CPU. With that being said, let's get into it. All right, so here at Premiere Pro, we've already created a one minute file of 8K files. Uh, no ProRes, no nothing of the such, just standard 8K video. Uh, we can see on uh, screen here, it's 8K files at 30. Uh, we rendered maximum depth. Uh, the beat rate we're gonna keep at 50. And um, it's just one minute of video and our mm -hmm. expected estimated file size is 377 megabytes. You did some tweaks earlier about putting it to software and to hardware, software encoding. Right, so for software encoding, we're um, gonna be disabling uh, the GPU cores, the GeForce CUDA cores, and we're just gonna this should, if I'm not wrong, and please correct me in the comments, if I'm not wrong, uh, once we pick software encoding, it's just going to run the CPU and the RAM with not much out of the GPU. So, yeah, let's uh, run it out and see how long it takes. And let's go. Alright, so a few minutes has passed. Still quite surprised because on like I'm using previous generation CPU and uh, it's not as smooth sailing as this and uh, it's handling 8K really really well. It's brand new after all. Mm -hmm. Mind you, this is not like the heaviest thing we can do, mm -hmm. but it's just a real world test. Yeah. <laughs> but do let us know in the comments down below if you want us to, you know, perhaps try After Effects render some motion graphics and things like that. Yeah. But I think for what it's worth, if any of you are doing 8K footage, this is going to... Make yeah. your life a lot more easier. Yeah. We are now in Doom Eternal and we're gonna go through into the settings to see how this weighs up in our test itself. We're going under video, V-Sync is off, so we can achieve maximum frames if possible. Uh, ray tracing is off as well, DLSS quality, let's see how it goes and obviously, when it comes to advanced the overall quality of this game, we are putting it on Ultra Nightmare. This is the highest we have gone, guys. Let's go on into the game and try out their brand new hot mode. And we are in the game now, guys. Space to continue. Go on into the game and try out their brand new hot mode. Okay, looking good. 92 FPS. Let's get going. 73 FPS. The most important thing you'll be looking for here, guys, is actually how hot this system actually runs over time and if it really works out against when everything starts to appear on screen. Boom! 70 FPS, staying nice and smooth. Imps here. Oops, I missed my imp. Ah, it's super sensitive. And it's looking pretty good. Stable FPS frames, you can't really see it move that much. It's turning out pretty well, guys. Let's take out this guy here. Come on. Man, you load up. Chainsaw. Load up once again. Let's go down, let's go down. Okay, guys, we have made it to the end of the first wave when it comes to Doom Eternal itself. It's looking pretty good. 
constant FPS, no issues at all. Let's go check out the temperatures. Temperatures wise, if you're looking here, that is looking awesome. No problem at all for this. That means there's plenty of headroom to go even though we are pushing this to its limits as much as we can. What else do we have? We have Genshin Impact. Okay. Let's go to settings first. Oh yeah, no, we went again to go to settings. Oh, okay. And graphics, high on default. Okay, no problem no at all. No problem, FPS is 60. 60. Desync off. Off, and resolution, yeah. No, it doesn't even count, I don't know. That's pretty good. Hi, 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 NTA in the sink, SMEA, okay. Motion Fork, Motion Blur Extreme, Color Density is high, Anti Scope, ah, 16. Okay. Okay, so let's get straight into the game. It's looking very smooth so far. Looking very smooth, and I'm looking at the CPU utilization, only 23%. No We're problem. Only 19, actually. 19? Or 13, yeah, it actually okay. went down. I mean, we can't go any higher when it comes to this game because FPS is pretty much capped at uh, 60 FPS. Let's go into a dungeon and a mission to see how it actually goes up. And all the flying, all the effects are flying about. You only play this on uh, PC, oh. actually. Uh, no, I play on PC, but the thing is, like, um, I was playing on my laptop back then before I got my PC, uh -huh. and I mean, it's not as smooth as this, lah. I think we're going easy on the CPU, guys. <laughs> way too easy. This, this is way too easy. Okay. I think this is too easy. Yeah, that is too easy yeah. we're, we're switching out. Yeah, yeah. switching out. <laughs> Zeki, you've been playing this game a lot. Let's see video. All right, everything is on epic. CPU utilization is only at twenty percent. Are you even testing the CPU? Yeah. <laughs> I think the only thing that could really stress it out was the benchmarks, and itself was looking pretty good. Actually, what? Let's just show the speed. Uh, cut. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well then. Stable. Very good. With that I being said, the DLSS has helped. It's hard to tell. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Alright, next game? Next game? Next game. Okay, so we're here in the Valorant menu. And everything has been set to the highest. FPS is uncapped. FPS, limit FPS always is off. Graphics quality. Multi third rendering on high 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 everything's on high V-Sync is off and the is is FXAA Discopric yeah and Discopric salt I don't know that thing is <laughs> 16 and after that yeah I think we're good to go for a game it's so looking it's, good yeah I, I can't tell you okay no, no they all they all going to it this is the pro, <laughs> pro gameplay guys no, this is a, this is how do you play Valorant without sound no this is how you train for Valorant you know. Yeah. Valorant, Valorant. It's all about instinct. So here, yeah, let's just... Uh, they're looking at, here. At least one kill. CPU utilization is at 25%. Oof. Oh, nice! Nice. <laughs> so here, yeah, let's just... Uh, they're looking at, here. At least one kill. CPU utilization is at 25%. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> what? I mean, I wanted to be funny, but it's okay. Okay, so, uh, Valorant. What do you think? Pretty damn well. I mean, obviously, like, y'all were talking about opti optimization and everything, so maybe that's why the CPU utilization was pretty high. I mean... Let's go to hardware info and take a look at the temperature. Hardware info, temperatures-wise, wow, Valorant's heating this thing up the highest we've seen so far. But average-wise, wow. it's still 40%, which is still pretty good. I mean, even for 60 or so, it, it yeah. honestly isn't that high. We're expecting temps normally about 90. 90 yeah. Like 100, but this is actually doing pretty well. Yeah, 65 at its max. Awesome. Yeah. Well done, Intel. Mm -hmm. Okay, that being said, let's go on and try... Forza? Forza? Alright, so we're jumping into the settings. On the basic tab here, we are running this at 4K Ultra, of course. Frame rate is unlocked. V-Sync is off. Hopping in to advance, these are our settings. Now, uh, based on Forza games, they've already kind of optimized it for you. So I'm gonna leave it on default. Um, because honestly, it looks good. It looks good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's save and continue. I'm jumping in. FPS is maxing out at 160 FPS here. Right, yeah. Jumping into it. Wow, CPU utilization is going up, but nothing too stressful. We are still hitting 150, 140, 150. Okay. 
Sweet Woo, that saw it sort to 44%, a small little brief moment, otherwise, not an issue. Whoa. Nice, the water looks good. Still, I mean, yeah, that went a little bit busy, went down to 130. Leave. But. FPS wise, looking good, 155. Tight turn. Oop, clipped a bit. Oh, look at that color, man. Just the shading and the reflections coming off the color. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Point some more. <laughs> 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 So much, pretty much action, it's a bit light, so... Night, there's snow... Mm. Are we pushing in anyway? No, frames are still good. Still yeah, and CPU utilization, 25% even in this state. Yeah. Okay, we're in the lead now, awesome. 23%, frames are still going good. Becky, what do you think? I think overall, and I mean including the other games, I think it's more of the GPU load. Mm. But what I can tell from, from testing out the CPU is that everything is just more responsive. I mean, you have to see all the components as one complete ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And the CPU itself helps with, how do, I, how do I say it? It just puts it all together nicely. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, like your CPU and the processing when you boot an app, of course that's also have to do with the SSD, but the CPU is basically managing all of these processes. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure if we alternate that right now, you won't be like have any like freezing or anything. Okay, so I don't try that. Alternate that. Temperatures wise, the highest we oh, this is the highest we have actually seen. 80%. Yeah. 80 degrees Celsius actually. Again, we, we We've left Premiere Pro on in the background. It's not gonna be smooth scrubbing, but dude, this is this itself is already very good. In fact, you can you can scrub a little bit. So this I know definitely when it comes to speed scrubbing like this and like playback, I'm pretty sure even in full. Come on, come on. Okay, a little bit of a freeze there. <laughs> Wow, I can oh. hear the fans going Wee! Oh wow, okay, so maybe not in full, maybe not in full, but half resolution. And mind you, like, I have the same GPU, but just, just the previous processor, and I had to run it at 1 over 8. Hmm. Okay, with that, I think we've put the Intel pretty much to its spaces. Yep. Let's give our final thoughts. We shall. Okay, now we have put the Intel 12th generation through its spaces, I think what we've seen here is pretty much very impressive from the folks at Intel. After all, the 12th generation CPU is running cooler and with less power consumed as well. That means there's plenty of headroom for developers to really push this CPU to its limits. After all, it's pretty impressive looking by the numbers here. And we're talking real world specs here, guys. This is what we're seeing on the very middle of the road type of build. We're not talking about the top end specs because after all, this we are looking at an i7-12700 CPU here and paired together with a very, I would say, very uh, modest 3070 GPU as well. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching through this video. Follow us on all our socials and leave us a subscribe and a like if you haven't. The most important thing at this point of time is that the Intel 12th generation CPUs, there might be plenty of questions that you might have that we have not covered in this video. So leave them all in the comment section below and we'll try our best to answer them as much as possible. With that being said, this is Gerald signing off.